Thank you for joining us online for the UNESCO CARS 2020 conference as we explore sustainable current best practices in cave conservation and restoration with this introduction to our international workshops. The first principle for everything about caving should be primum non nocere, first, do no harm. By way of introduction, here we are. My husband, Jim Worker, and me, Val Hildreth Worker. For over 20 years, we've served the National Speleological Society in the U.S. as Conservation Division Chiefs. This is our big book of cave conservation and management, published by the NSS with support from the National Cave and Karst Research Institute. The volume offers 600 pages with 46 peer-reviewed contributors who collaborated with us in defining current best practices. The book describes sustainable, state-of-the-art, science-based theory, strategy, and a lot of nose-to-the-flowstone practical techniques. Cave conservation is always an evolving process. We encourage finding new minimum impact solutions informed by science, technology, and field experience. While working on the book, Jim and I began to coordinate collaborative workshops. We've conducted seminars, workshops, and training events for various federal, state, and municipal agencies, universities, and institutions, conferences, and events, corporate sponsors, show caves, private landowners, conservancies, and nature preserves, as well as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We work in close collaboration with an individual or a small team who know the cave venue. Our collaborators coordinate the logistics, speak the language, understand the workshop participants, and work closely with us in planning and presenting the workshops. It is an honor and pleasure to partner with these fine cavers from around the globe and with all of you as partners in international cave conservation. As examples, we'll use detail from three very different workshop events. With our partners from Brazil, left to right, Vitor Mora, Luciana Alt, Augusto Auler, Jim Worker, and me. We prepared and conducted a seven-day international training course using two show caves in the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais. The workshop was held in Gruta Macané and Gruta Redemato and was sponsored by the Instituto de Cache, Brazil's Karst Institute and Anglo-American Mining Company. Through an intense application process, 30 participants were hand-selected for this first training course from among federal, state, and private environmental protection professionals, mining company officials, biologists, geologists, and archaeologists from academic, federal, and private venues, plus environmental lawyers, show cave managers, interpretive guides, and cavers. Each day, we had two to four hours of classroom theory and activity. For some, this was their very first look at a cave map. Every day, we spent many hours in cave with small teams identifying issues, making decisions, assessing impacts, and getting in there with hands-on success and addressing a variety of nose-to-the-flowstone applications with the accompanying frustrations and the rewards that come from long hours of mitigating human impacts and giving back to a cave. Teams adapted their plans and techniques as they encountered unexpected situations while performing the tasks. Seven days provided plenty of time for trying out a variety of real-time restoration and management methods and gave us great one-on-one -on -one time for questions and interaction, group discussion, thinking through challenges, considering options, exploring, exploring sustainable solutions, impact mapping to identify issues and plan strategies for restoration, organizing team presentations. We even found time for sorting show cave rubbish that blossomed into a spontaneous art statement in the parking lot. With brick and rubble removed from the cave, this team made a structural statement representing the Makane Cave entrance. Lot of issue. Portuguese for trash can, a contemporary art photo message to the public. 
Another conservation partner, Ferdinando de Donna from Italy, invited us to do a workshop to augment technical skills for the Pugliamo il Buio, or Clean the Dark campaign. He coordinated with the Italian Speleological Society to bring our workshop to the Nuro region of Sardinia for an international rendezvous of 1,500 cavers. During our workshop spanning two days, 20 participants explored cave conservation and restoration through classroom theory, team interaction, and in-cave projects. We were in a wild, undeveloped cave for hands-on practice during this workshop, and to protect the cultural and historical significance, small teams first assessed and documented the markings, carefully tested techniques, and photographed processes as they monitored their progress in removing contemporary graffiti. This team came up with a clever idea use two cell phones to quickly capture and document before and after photographs in one image. Teams tested various tools, vigilant to employ a really light touch, made a few typical, here's an overzealous faux pas, and discovered solutions. You can pixelate and blend away the scar using natural materials from the cave. Participants began to do some speleothem repair with training in the proper use of more archival museum-grade epoxies. Apply the special cave-safe epoxy only in the middle of the break. Stay away from the edges to avoid epoxy squeeze-out along the break joint. In the workshops, we learn a lot from each other, we accomplish a lot, and take a lot of new information forward to the next cave project. Our partners from the Classical Karst in Slovenia are Rosanna Serkvenik from Skosjans Caves Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and Micha Prelovsek from the Karst Research Institute of Slovenia. Together, they organized the logistics for our workshop, which was held during the International Conference on Sustainable Management of Show Caves at Skosjanski Yama. They arranged for national TV coverage. Of the full in-cave workshop with participants initiating projects in flowstone cleanup using only brushes, sponges, water, and clean exam gloves, photo documenting progress and techniques, mitigating footprints. If the impact results from anthropogenic activities, then fix it or clean it up. However, if the impact is from natural occurrences, like the drip marks at the top of the image, then we usually leave it be. Footsteps can be camouflaged by retexturing to blend the imprint because visible footprints will invite others to follow and the imprints will increase. Participants removed old piles of spent carbide. We demonstrated an introduction to speleothem repair. And in the classroom, we explored other speleothem repair techniques and the necessary archival products and materials. In cave removal of clearly contemporary graffiti, working in teams to test the techniques and achieve tangible results, inventory assessment of anthropogenic impacts, photo document and monitor work in progress and plan future ongoing restoration events. Typically, our objectives are to train in conservation standards and techniques with didactic theory and practical application and to initiate and motivate the continuation of cave conservation projects after the workshop. Our workshops help advance cave conservation practices that protect natural and cultural heritage. Sometimes people ask, can you really restore a cave? Yes, cave environments can be restored. We can't take a passage back to a completely pristine state, but we can restore it to a former condition. We can help promote a return to ecological balance. Here's an example. 
Human activity can introduce harmful things into cave habitats like industrial particulates, lint, residue. Over time, the anthropogenic impact builds up and changes the native cave ecosystem, but it can also be cleaned up, and the Spelean habitat can be restored to a former condition. Here's how we found this cave entrance. Yes, graffiti can be cleaned up, but only after careful inventory and assessment for cultural and historic markings. Contemporary graffiti is laboriously removed and the cave is restored to a more natural state. A cave pool before we cleaned it, with silt left behind by careless footsteps tromping through the clean aquatic habitat, and after delicate restoration to a more pristine state. Here's how we found this broken stalagmite. Formations can be repaired to stand and or hang strong again where they originally grew. In this final section, we'll introduce a few of the minimum impact guidelines from our workshops. A PDF with bullet points for generic minimum impact caving is available with this presentation. Each Spelian environment is unique. Workshop participants have developed protocols for specific caves and protocols for specific disciplines in speleology. Always look before touching and think, what will I damage? Is this a necessary hold? Learn to use minimum impact caving techniques. Dirty gloves leave imprints on handholds and cave walls. Instead, use the cleaner back of your glove. Sometimes all we need is a knuckle or a fingertip for balance. And after restoration, use a clean exam glove and touch only a small spot. To protect pristine areas in caves, use clean powder-free vinyl gloves and then move gently and efficiently through the special area. Catch your crumbs and carry everything out of the cave. There's no need to introduce more organic carbons into often low-nutrient cave environments. Minimum Impact Caving Reduce the need for cave restoration. Protect the caves and the resources they harbor. We thank you for joining us. And we welcome your questions and discussion. So please, feel free to contact us with ideas, comments, questions, workshop concepts. Jim Worker at caves.org and Val Hiltrethworker at caves.org.